Being the word. Jim, would you take a roll call, please? Bill Arsis? Uh, here. John Dooley? Here. Jim Pruitt? John Whipple? Here. Boris Reese? Here. Okay. Uh, approval of the agenda. I have one change that I'd like to make on it. Underneath budget, I want to add uh, that we review this request on the speaking and topic meeting that the, the mayor had handed out. There's one there on uh, Jim's. Is there anything else that looks like it needs to be changed or corrected? I'll move we approve the agenda as amended. Got a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, would you please read the minutes from the last minute, please? City of Princeburg, Indiana, Board of Aviation Commissioners, Monday, October 28, 2013. President Bill Ernstus called the meeting to order at 7 p.m. Roll call was taken. Present were Bill Ernstus, John Dooley, Jim Dewey, Don Wilkin, and Morris Reese. Agenda approval. It was noted by Bill Ernstus that the mayor has requested that any guest wishing to speak at the meeting will submit a request prior to the meeting to be added to the agenda. Morris <coughs> Reese made a motion to approve the requirement to have any guests submit a request to be put on the agenda prior to the meeting. Don with the second motion. The motion carried by roll call vote five to zero. Judy Kerr read the minutes from the September 23rd, 2013 meeting. John Dooley motion and Jim Pruitt seconded the motion to approve the September 23rd minutes as read. The motion passed unanimously. John Dooley read the Board of Aviation Commissioner's financial report. Old business, fuel system. Bill Estes reviewed the proposals for the Jet A fuel system with the board. Proposals were received from the following contractors. W.G. Gentry, $145,273. Garsight, $110,929. New Fuel Incorporated, $89,401. And Fuel Check Incorporated, $106,490. After discussion, John Dooley motioned at R.S. Recession. The motion to accept the proposal from Fuel Tech Incorporated for $106,490, also to include the addition of option one, side mounted ladder with deck platform at $2,700, and option two, FTI 20 gallon sump fuel recovery system, $2,700 for a total of $111,890. The motion carried by roll call vote five to zero. The board also discussed application fees from Homeland Security. John Dooley motioned, motioned and Doris Reese seconded a motion to pay all Homeland Security fees up to not to exceed $200. The motion carried by roll call vote 5 to 0. Koran Hanger. Bill Arsis advised the board that there has not been any progress in the discussions with the Moran State to settle the contract. The BOAC is actively seeking a new renter for the hangar. The budget report was tabled until the next meeting. <coughs> New business, approved payment of bills. The total for the bills due is $572.59. Boris Reese motion and Jim Pruitt seconded the motion to approve the payment of the bills. The motion carried by roll call vote 5 to 0. Don Manley reviewed the progress made on the capital improvement plan after discussion. The board requested that a tax away timeline be added to 2014 plan. Mr. Manley will submit the revised CIP plan for a vote at the December meeting. Once the plan is approved by the board, it will be submitted to the state of Indiana. He also advised the board that the quarterly report has been submitted for the current grant. Don also read an article from Business Aviation posted 10 13 John Dooley motion and Jim Pruitt seconded that the meeting be adjourned. The motion passed unanimously and President Bill Ernst is adjourned the meeting at 7 48 p.m. The next meeting is scheduled for Monday, November the 25th, 2013, at 7 p.m. So you raise your hand again. I have one correct under the U Food, U Fuel for 89,401. Uh, I spoke with Don Cribb, he had looked at this and said that was the lowest bid, but it actually, this was the uh, a figure before he corrected his bid, and I will get you the appropriate figure for what it was. Yeah. Okay. I have 
have one thing to just ask for clarification. So my recollection under agenda approval, it has here that we voted to uh, about the uh, requirement to have guests submit a request. Did we actually vote on that, or did we just yes. we did vote on that? Yes. Of course. Okay, I remember we voted to approve the agenda, but okay. Anyone? I don't recall. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Because my recollection, I made the wrong. My recollection was we approved the agenda, but I, I thought Bill had mentioned we were going to do that. We didn't really vote on it. Right? Wrong about that. Did we actually vote on the? I think we voted on it with further discussion about form and, and how we were going to require it, but okay. we voted to do it. Okay. Yeah. okay. Any other directions or changes need to be made? If not, I'll accept the motion to approve the changes. I'll uh, move that we approve the uh, minutes with uh, Bill's change in the UV will get to come. Second. Uh, roll call vote, please. Bill Arstis? Yes. John Dooley? Yes. Jim Brew? Don Webble? Yes. Scores Reeves? Yay. Yeah. Okay, John, we uh, the uh, financial report, please. 2013 monthly airport totals. The airport finances are broken into three separate accounts account 815, the airport, airport improvements account. The year-to-date balance of one hundred fourteen thousand seven hundred ninety-seven dollars ninety-eight cents. Account eight sixteen, the aviation road and refuel account. The year-to-date balance seventy thousand one hundred thirty-three dollars sixty-seven cents. Account eight seventeen, airport operations. The balance to date is two two hundred thirty-three thousand one hundred twelve dollars forty-eight cents. The total of all three airport accounts combined four hundred eighteen thousand forty-four dollars thirteen cents. Good. Fuel system. Um, I'll bring you up to date on it. We had approved in the last months uh, for the fees up to $200. Well, we didn't send anything in because the fees are more than $200. And it's on the billing uh, what it will be that we have to pay the Homeland Security and the department, fire department billing uh, people that have to approve the plans also. We're on schedule as far as I can tell. We, we don't know exactly when they'll be here. Uh, I have talked to Homeland Security as far as the variance of going from 10 to 12,000. Uh, that would be no problem. Uh, they said if we wanted to wait till July, it'll be new rules anyway. But, uh, so that shouldn't be any problem with it being the variance being taken care of. The current rules are 10,000. Yeah. It's going to change to 12,000 in July. So we get the variance. It shouldn't be probably the variance to twelve. But we don't have to wait till no. no, 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 no. no. It, it, it yeah. shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Okay. And the other, everything is ready to go. As soon as we get the checks, uh, put it in the envelopes and mail it to them. And the fire chief said, as far as the fire department side of it, if you need help getting things speeded up, he can help us with that. Everything's looking good. I've had a few talks with the homeland security people. Found out that I got a cousin up there that works for him, so I don't know if that's good or bad. But that's where we stand with the fuel system. And next would be the Horan hangar, and I have not talked to Mr. Trippett about it, but they were going to talk to the personal representative for the Horan estate and see what he wanted to do. Don Witness has not got back to the uh, trip. Apparently had some brief discussions, but nothing mm -hmm. substantial. Okay. Uh, next on the, the agenda, or not agenda, the budget. Uh, see included here, this is what Don and I came up with. Between uh, 2013 2014, there were uh, some minor problems in two different forms that we got straightened out. And what it really amount to, one of them, they had skipped the school and travel. We now have that in the 2014 under the changes. Uh, anything in red is a change, and the for the school and travel is not a change. It was on another form. It went on to this one. It still came up to eight thousand six hundred and seventy dollars. Didn't change the total. I think it would have changed some items. 
The one form that had been made out, um, they had this amount on it, but it was actually more than that. Yes. So we corrected it and uh, adjusted the figures accordingly. <clears throat> Is this something, Bill, that <clears throat> we should start working on earlier? Yes. So that we don't uh, get March. so we, so that we don't get into the yeah. the crunch of when mm -hmm. it should be done. Right. We we'll put that down for certain March. Any questions on it? Uh, we, as you can see, we removed snow removal, and for some reason, the telephone was in there two times. We combined those. Uh, Like I said, they had school travel on one and then on the other. We moved it on to it and then we adjusted the figures to come out to what was uh, budgeted for the 80670 So the short story is what's in red in the far right column is your changes. Or the changes, is correct. Okay. And you can see compared to the one column to the left of it, um, like electric, we increased at 700. Telephone we increased uh, about 750. <coughs> Any further discussion? My only comment is what Aura said we need to start on this really early Correct. next year and try to be a a little more realistic about yeah. it because things have changed out there. I'd like a, somebody to make a motion to accept this and I'll take it to Bridget. Well, I'm going to accept it. Do I have a second? Yes. A roll call vote, please. Bill Orsis? Yes. John Dooley? Yes. Tim Crook? Yes. Yes. Okay, the next thing is. Uh, Request for speaking, although we had uh, voted last time 5 nothing, that the team would do the request, I wanted everybody to see the form that they that made up that we can pass out to y'all. If you request, uh, uh, do you have a copy of it? Or yeah. I can give you a copy or make copies for it or whatever. Okay. This is the form that the city uses, isn't it? That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. New business. Uh, before we leave, before we leave that, Bill, I have had a problem in the past, and I know some of the board members know people in the audience that other members don't know, and I think it's a, a, a absolute requirement that anytime anyone does speak, that we know who they are before they start. And that has not been the case very often. Uh, I have no problem with anyone speaking before the board if they have a subject they want to discuss. But I don't like the idea of just coming to the meeting and something hitting the hot button and jumping up and jumping on it. I have a problem with that. It's a public meeting. People are more than welcome to come to public meetings and record the meeting if they like, but in order to speak according to the Louisiana law, they just request ahead of time. So we're not doing anything that isn't by right law. And I might mention to the public also, if after the meeting, if you got any questions you'd like to ask, I'll be more than happy to try to answer it for you. If I don't have the answers, I'll get them for you. As long as you don't speak for the board. True. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a must, yes. you know, for any of us. Okay. The bills. Everybody had a chance to look those over? Get you back up where people work. Okay, we'll get your uh, I think you took the or they'll be formed right after the door. Okay. And take them with them and send them to us. Or they can mail them to us or call and say we want to be on whatever. It's set up to uh, either mail it or email it to the administrative system to be able to pass the judge the Good. Anything more on that subject? Let's look at the business.
bills. I saw them bail, and I saw no problem with my moving with them. Do I have a second on that one? There's one extra one here that wasn't on it, and that's for our attorney. Uh, $2,650.25. It came in later, I assume, because she gave it to me. Let's place the board to sign it if we approve it. Well, we've been done a few months ago. <coughs> We, we had a lengthy discussion about that, and we agreed that we would not pay any bills that came in late. Is it late? I mean, well, it wasn't in here in time for us to see them before the meeting. Here. I'm here. Do the what? I, I, I tend to agree with Horace. If, if it isn't on here, it's okay. late. We can hold it to next month. I guess my point is What's that. The date? I know what you're What's saying. What's the date on it, Bill? The invoice date was 11-22. So I can wait till next month. My point is that sometimes you have to train the people you're working with. If this is a training session where we have to train him, that we have to get it so that we can, then he'll get in earlier. I'm not against paying him. <clears throat> next month I'll, I'll, I'll vote to pay it. So, but be prudent and get your stuff in on time. Okay. On the other bills, we have a we have a motion made. Do I have a second? Yes. Roll call vote, please. Bill Arstis. Yes. John Dooley. Yes. Jim Pruitt. Don Noble. Yes. Boris Reese. Yes. Okay. Mr. Manley, your turn. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board. Um, I'll focus on two items. The first one is uh, is the time of the year where we do a uh, cash review of the grant programs, and I have a financial federal financial report form that needs to be authorized for signature. The signature is uh, typed in here is uh, the president. So uh, this form is a standard form for the grant program to tell them how much money financially has been paid out. item is that I handed out before the meeting a uh, copy of the, at this point in time I'll call it the uh, draft final CIP because we anticipate to uh, actually formally approve it at the December meeting. But I would like to go over it a little bit just to bring you up to speed and where, what, what items have occurred. Uh, prior to this point, uh, we've uh, anticipated what we're going to be receiving from the state uh, we did receive the state's request for a CIP in November, and the request for the state CIP in November had two items that have changed. The first item is pretty good for the community, is that they increased their percentage to 5%. So I have made a correction in the forms to show that they have a matching 5% for the state, 5% local, and then the other 90% is the federal grant program. So that's up for 2.5%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a good item. The uh, next item is that they have found a, an opportunity for grant loans, not grants, but for a loan program. It's, it's, uh, it's, in the, it's called Type 3, you got one federal grant program. Two is a state and local matching program grant. Three is a uh, loan program. And it's through the Indiana Finance Authority. So if the, the uh, 
community is interested in going through a low interest loan program, uh, the um, Indiana Finance Authority is working out some uh, a program for airport projects. It's been used for everything else as far as infrastructure uh, other than airports up at this point in time. So that's another good item, low interest loans through the Indiana Finance Authority. I uh, do not show anything for type three programs at this point in time in the CIP. Matter of fact, I don't show the state and local program either. Uh, that's a type two. Everything that I show in the CIP at this point is type one, which is a federal grant program, the 90% federal grant program. The other item is that the last meeting instructed me to um, make a correction to incorporate the uh, taxiway connector, the existing taxiway, into the project under 2014, and I believe that shows up on your uh, form that way. The numbers that show up for the taxiway connector are straight out of the uh, state's uh, pavement condition index report for uh, uh, just a simple overlay, the same thing we did on the run. The other item in the report that I've never mentioned before is the payment management program. I did type in a payment management program consistent with what you had last year as a payment management program, which is that uh, you're showing $3,000 an annual uh, used for payment management on the airport. Now that's just an estimated number. That doesn't necessarily mean that you have to spend $3,000 or it might be something that requires you a one-time deal shop to spend more than that. That depends on on um, the year of wear and tear and what happens. So uh, that is it. I think everything else is consistent with what we I presented at the last meeting. Is there any questions on the CIP? I would like for you to address the uh, memorandum from the FAA concerning the 21 slope. Mm -hmm. So that everybody understands what Okay, uh, the FAA has sent a uh, memorandum out to all airports across the board and start the entire nation, asking them to consider reviewing their approach surfaces prior to the FAA coming in and flying the approach surface. It's required of you to have clear approaches for activity on an airport, and it's your responsibility to do that. And it appears that there has been some airports across the nation where that may not have occurred and they have found that they've had to uh, put a penalty on the airport because they have obstructions in the approach surface. Could you explain to what an approach surface actually is? Okay, it's yeah. not ground, it's... Uh, the approach surface is out in the, the threshold or the landing point where the aircraft will be touching down on the runway. 200 feet from in, out from that, into the approach, you have a surface, and the surface is 20 feet out for every one foot vertical, 20 feet horizontal, one foot uh, up in the air, which is just a little under a three degree angle. That surface has a trapezoidal width. It's defined based on the uh, federal regulations, and it's called Federal Aviation Regulation Part 77. You can look that up, you can type it into your uh, website will come automatically up on part 77. It's pretty common in the aviation industry. So that part 77 has got a width of, it, it varies depending on the utilization of the airport, but on this airport we're believing at this point in time, we're not, we haven't confirmed it yet, but we believe that this runway is going to have a 250 foot wide inner you go 200 feet out, 250 feet wide, inner width, and that'll splay out on both sides to a trapezoid, 
at, for, uh, and I'm going to use a distance out, but it actually goes farther to the surface. A distance out of 1,000 feet, it would be 450 feet wide at 1,000 feet. That gives you your splay on the angle on both sides where fan tails out, fans out into the approach surface. It's 20 to 1, and part 77 for this airport for 20 to 1 extends out to 10 or 5,000 feet. So uh, that's uh, the surfaces on both ends that you're supposed to uh, maintain do we, clear. Do we presently meet that? You meet that? Mm -hmm. I have no idea. No. I, I myself personally, I I haven't really investigated at this point. Maybe we'll, you've been. We'll know for sure in the next two weeks. Question: Did airports that have not been in compliance, what sort of things have been in the area? What sort of things have been in the area? If they're not trees or fences or yeah, if they're not in compliance, there is three different levels: low, medium, and high. Uh, if they're not in compliance, you have a certain period of time to be able to clear, clean it up. And if you do not, after that period of time, there is two opportunities here. One is that you lose your minimum. The other is that that a note amount and you close that run. I mean, it can get that bad. What sort of structures have these other airports out of compliance? That they find what, what kind of things have been in these? Areas? I only I've never never heard of an airport getting closed. I know of times where the minimums have been raised on them, and the airport goes, wow, my minimum's raised. Uh, they didn't even know it. The FAA comes in and flies it. They don't, they're not required or obligated to tell anybody, and they put it on the approach place that its uh, minimums are now something else, circling, which used to be uh, straight in. But in what sort of things could interrupt this? What sort of things could have been tree. What what could cause the penetration? Yeah. Uh, trees, buildings. It could be a tower also, but it be corrected just lit. There's all or painted. You know, there is various things you can do to if, mitigate if you, the circumstances. If it's a penetration and you opt to light it, but you do have an obstruction already out there, which is the uh, uh, grain elevators. So it's light and has been clear for that, for that. That's not even any approach service, but that's an example. What they do is what's called an uh, airspace determination. And the FAA uh, reviews it based on other criteria to determine whether or not it's safe to use that approach. An example, now, in case minimums, I like on an instrument approach, uh, coming in on the GPS approach, the minimum is you come down to 700 foot above the ground. If they have to change it, they might say 1,000 foot above the ground because of something that, that would change your minimum on your approaches. Am I correct? Uh, they are going to move it down to 200 feet. But yeah, it, it, it would become a, probably what would happen is that it would become a, you would lose the approach. Probably. Yeah. The published approach. Because you're already at 700 feet, your minimums as far as circling is 800, 800 feet. 800, 800 feet. 800 feet. Uh, my, my venture guess that that approach would probably not be raised, it would just go away. Yeah. Yeah. It's just one of the things we have to review and make sure we're fall within the categories. And, and rightfully so. It's just something that you're supposed to check anyhow as far as operating an airport. It's one of those things that need to be uh, clarified all the time. I mean, normally, a couple of years ago, Kevin Rector came down from the, from the state when ETC put the cable up. And he did check the north end. I think he went to the south end and did the same thing with his implementer and said to be sure everything was clear. But now, He's more official than we are. <laughs> I used to do the same thing for the state. Mm -hmm. so. Pretty simple. Just takes a handheld instrument. You walk both sides of the approach surface and check the same obstruction in both locations. Roughly, trees grow between, say, three to eight feet a year, depending on soil conditions, 
type of tree it is. Okay. okay. Uh, that's gentlemen all I have to report on. Okay. Be ready to approve. Uh, I probably will, unless I hear something different, I probably will not be bringing back new copies of the uh, draft final. If there are corrections prior to that, I'll make them and then bring it. But if there's no, if I hear no corrections, then uh, I'll be asking the uh, board's approval of the CIP to be sent to the state in the December meeting. Do you anticipate any changes with this document or for the next uh, meeting? I, I don't. Okay. I haven't done my final review either, but uh, I don't see anything changing unless you uh, let me know that there's there is a need for a change. I always can overlook something, so it's always good to have several eyes on this. Uh, there are signature pages that are required when I'm in December, and right now I have it for President uh, Ernst is to sign it in several locations, and you will be signing pages for the CIP on each individual year be signing the letter of request to be submitted, and then you'll be signing the uh, payment management program summary sheet that you say again will report to the state. That talks about dates of last annual inspections and uh, anticipated cost for repair of the pavement. from the board? If not, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So moved. That second? Yep. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. <coughs>